Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another Propaganda Cast Slayer with me, your host, Imperial Dane. And we're off here to have a look at tanks. Yes, indeed, tanks. You know, things like the Sherman EC8, not things like, say, the Jackson. And while you might say, well, they've both got some armor and a turret, but the Jackson is not really capable of dealing with infantry, amongst other things, is also lacking rather a bit in machine guns, which rather lacks some of the tankier bits, but of course, durability wise, not so strong. I mean, overall, if we're going to categorize tanks, of course, there's the light, there's the medium, there's heavy. Medium, of course, is things like the EC8s, Panthers, Panther 4s, T 3476, and T 3485s. Regular Shermans and such light tanks, Stuarts, T seventies, Luke's heavy tanks. We're looking at IS twos and Tigers, King Tigers, and the likes. And of course, they have different sort of areas where they sort of perform reasonably well in, and areas where they don't perform very well. To be honest, medium tanks sort of sort of cover the sort of well medium spectrum. They can sort of conduct several roles well, though of course you should probably not expect them to sort of pull off a full front assault against your opponent because they're not quite built for that. But let's go with some of the other basics of a tank for starters, for example, how armor is set up. There is in companies too, like there was in companies one, only two parts of armor. There's this front and there's the rear. Basically how it goes is there's an 180 degree sort of front of again the end the circle, the first 180 degrees, 180 degrees, good lord my apologies yeah, my tongue is slipping is basically the front. The rest of the 800 degrees are the rear. So basically somewhere around here is where the front and the rear is sort of demarcated. Get a shot in there, of course you'll hit front, hit there, rear armor. And generally in any arm engagement, unless of course you're fighting versus light tanks with anything but a light tank, of course, you generally sort of want to get through the rear center, of course that's the best chance we have of penetrating. Penetrating overall is basically a chance, you know, divided on, you know, the penetration of the gun and the pen armor itself overall. And overall you should just sort of look at it, you know, as a chance and overall sort of way is the chance in my favor. I mean some people sort of tend to go, well, you know, this should penetrate if I keep shooting at it. Well statistically sure you might get through, but even then, do you want to bet on it? Because ultimately that's partly what's going to come down to do you want to bet on it? And of course in that guy you know when it comes to armor fighting, you usually want to stack the uh, Odds in your favor, which of course means flanking, or bring in something bigger, or bringing in enough tanks so where things won't matter. And even then, you know, if again there's a sufficiently armored tank, like for example a Panther, and you're going with regular Shams, of course things might not go quite in your way. But again, that's one part of armor. There's also another part of it for the shorter to do with penetration, and that is range. I'll just sort of have things going a bit here, but overall, range, depending on the range of the gun and where it's firing from and where it's hitting is the target, you know, it will de penetrate differently. It will penetrate differently. And you might ask yourself, well, does that really matter? And yes, it does. I mean, it does also determine how you should use your tanks to a certain extent and how certain armor engagements generally go well. Generally, of course, the Germans tend to have the bigger frontal armor. In particular, the Panther has the best, but it also has the weakest rear armor. It also generally means, you know, it also has a really good penetrative gun, which also means in general you want to keep the Panther at range. And of course it also means, for example, a Sherman, for example, even an EC8, of course, will have a less chance of sort of penetrating the frontal armor Panther at range. It also means, for example, a Panther IV, while not impressive, generally would stand a better chance of surviving at the furthest away range compared to up close, where basically the other tank might have a much better chance of winning due to, for example, higher rate of fire or what. Ever. So there are, for example, all really little details there to keep in mind. Again, range also determines a lot of things. Again, it's sort of hinted at. Again, things like the Panther, for example, you best get sort of out of keeping it at range. For example, with an EC8 versus a Panther 4, that you might actually benefit from keeping the EC8 at range as well, since it does have higher rate armor, but also higher penetrative power, for example, than the Panther 4. In that regard, you know, try to sort of keep these things in mind. There's a sort of a slight hierarchy there, and so depending on how it goes, you want to get close or behind them. Of course, in case of a panther, you generally always want to get behind. Though if you can't get behind, get close. Though if you do get close on the front, you'll generally want to do it in numbers. Otherwise, of course, that's where tank destroyers come in, and of course, tank destroyers are always something to be wary about when you're using tanks, as they can generally mess up your day if you're not careful. So that is one thing then to keep in mind. Of course, another one is sort of territory to be employed in. 
medium tanks in general sort of do all right in all kinds of territory but for example going into sort of more urban territory is more dangerous for them likewise for tank light tanks for example and you might ask yourself well why is that because overall most tanks generally depend on maneuver except for the heavy tanks and when you go into a sort of village or a town what is that's particular about towns and villages they're usually full of small roads and not a lot of room to sort of maneuver about in which overall means it generally tends to be very dangerous and also allows your opponent sort of better focus up his defenses and shoot your tanks to tiny bits which overall means you know when it comes to villages and cities medium tanks are not necessarily where you want to be going unless you got something extra for example of course in the case of the Sherman smokescreen tend to sort of limit the effectiveness of their anti-tank weapons as an example though of course not all sides have that advantage Another thing, of course, with medium tanks, medium tanks, of course, and you know, most tanks, at least except the light ones, of course, is the machine guns as well. They do also make a difference there when it comes to deal with enemy infantry, and should certainly not be neglected. In particular, the Pendulum machine guns can get quite a bit, and they can also, for example, allow to quickly wipe out an anti-tank gun as you flank it. So generally, that is not something to be ignored either. Overall, again, your medium tanks are your more flexible ones, the sort of ones for the mo most of roles of course again they de depending on what again they sort of perform differently Shermans, Sherman EC8s, Panther 4 sort of all rounders, T-34 76s also there though they do perform a bit better versus infantry some are of course Shermans can specialize towards dealing with both armor or infantry sort of well though definitely performs quite well versus infantry Panther on the other hand more armor specialized again but if you get the pin to my machine gun it does perform reasonably well versus infantry as well so those are some things to keep in mind and overall if you can get them machine guns are usually a good addition to your tank since it does add a bit more punch and again more particular punch on the move and also you know punch not necessarily dependent on them placing their stuff right in front of your tank so of course it's also vital to keep in mind and will certainly give you a bit more out of your tanks and certainly, of course, it does allow you to do a lot of nasty things to infantry. Of course, there's another thing you have to keep in mind, of course, is enemy infantry. Now, not all enemy infantry will be a threat to your tanks, though it will generally be the basic infantry on most sides that will be the threat. Riflemen, grenadiers, conscripts. The Wehrmacht, or the Oberkommand West, doesn't really have any, though. That's actually more specialist, like, say, Fallschirmjäger. They actually caused a the problem there with Panzer for Slier, but overall, otherwise, those are the gentlemen to keep care of, take care of, because they can damage the engineer tanks, of course, in that regard, most tanks, again, are very much dependent on mobility. And again, as I mentioned before, again, they are. Light tanks are very much dependent on mobility. I mean, if we're going to sort of take a look at this map, they'd not really be sort of the most well-suited here, and really, in particular, fortified, since, again, there's less mobility, there's a lot less chance of them, well, being ambushed, got a higher chance of being ambushed, getting damaged, and being an easy target than for say for example being dealt with a pack 40 or something else and of course in that regard anti-tank gun tends to be one of the greater enemies of the tank though of course flanked it can usually be dealt with and some tanks do perform better in dealing with anti-tank weapons rapidly of course ensconced infantry within buildings also tend to be a problem for the tanks so that's also something you have to be careful about there and overall you need more specialized units sort of dealing with infantry within a building unless the building is ready to collapse so that's also a little detail there to keep in mind. But for example, in light tanks perform well, tends to be more open terrain here. On the flanks, try to sort of look out for units that are more isolated because some here. These three kind of these would be an excellent target for any light tank to quickly strike and do some serious damage to and clear away. In that regard, light tanks sort of, you know, harassers, scouts, they might also be used again if you're launching light your tanks to sort of be quick to strike into the opponent's rear or flank and oh, whatever and sort of cause some chaos there while then your main force strikes through so in that regard that's where sort of light tanks are still but again they're not really no units that are very well suited for urban territory if you absolutely have to use them there you use them as infantry support which rather means they do not lead the way the infantry does in which case I mean you'll basically sort of have an infantry marching force the tank will sort of slowly follow after the infantry sort of like covering fire but also in that regard the infantry can spot for the light tank in some cases of course quickly get the t give you time for your light tank the steward t70 looks to get out of there but again that is absolutely much then same would also be a good idea to, to sort of do for your medium tanks in the assault here in a village area and probably even a bit the heavy tanks medium tanks of course overall excel 
everywhere to a certain extent, but of course they also perform better if they can get the mobility. In particular, Allied tanks versus German tanks are very much dependent on the mobility to sort of get the drop on him. In particular, versus Panthers, in that regard, you also want to sort of surprise the Panther and get behind it somehow. Overwhelm in that regard, again, numbers are the key for the Allies. Don't expect your tanks, for example, to go one on one versus Panther. If you're expecting that, you're thinking wrong. Versus Panther 4, of course, things are a lot more, you know. Close and of course, that guard for some an EC8 has there. The EC8 is sort of right, well, not right below, but below a Panther in that regard, somewhere also a bit above the T3045, though the T35 is close. So, those are little things that keep time. And of course, heavy tanks, not exactly masters of mobility. Those are really there where you want to sort of lay down the heaviest strikes you can, you know, punch through here or punch through a flank. Of course, you don't want to want to drive straight into the thickest line of fire where all the anti tank is aimed from. But again, if you absolutely have to do, they're probably the best. And even then, laying down a smoke screen first is not a bad idea. But again, they're there to sort of soak up the damage and deal it up. But they're not very mobile. They can easily be up and of course, that's one thing to keep in mind there. So, of course, that is also vital to keep in mind. You know, again, and that regard, heavy tanks might, of course, struggle in open terrain. And again, that's also where sort of terrain where they can sort of better cover up their flanks and such, like, say, a town or something like that, you know does help them out quite a bit. So that is also a little something to keep in mind. Then of course you might even then, if you have to use that weapon, support them with some medium tanks so they're less vulnerable or something else. In general, heavy tanks require a lot more support to sort of get properly off the ground if your opponent knows what he's doing. If he does, of course, you might get away with no support. Medium tanks can do well with support. Of course, light tanks are probably the ones to sort of perform the best without light support because again they do have the speed to quickly strike and get out of there. So again if you can keep those things in mind while using your armor you will generally perform alright I would say. But again you always try to strike and flank your opponent. Never try to go for direct straight up fight head on. I mean you can but usually you will want to sort of get behind and flank them because again that puts the odd in your face. Of course in that regard you also have to be mindful of getting flanked yourself. Since, of course, that can also give you a problem. Always try to keep your rear away from the enemy. In particular, on the Panther, on the Panther, the rear is really sort of the weak point. And it's absolutely there. Your opponent should always try to aim for one, of course, that you have to worry about. And again, with speeds, of course, riflemen, kind of this, all that. But, of course, mines are then also a huge threat. And, of course, that's why mines is important as the game progresses. And again, for some, you know, the American M20 mine, very lethal to enemy tanks, can easily so disable a tank. And of course, in that regard, a tank disabled, immobilized, is a very big target and can pretty much be dealt with safely by anti tank guns or something. So, that's always something to worry about. Regular mines do pretty well there, also. Then comes the certain mines, and then that's about it, really. But overall, you want to be mindful of tanks. And also, a good thing to sort of keep out on flank here and there because you can catch a flanking tank for some unit can give you some, some time. Now, of course, versus the Americans, they do have a slight benefit, and their crews can rapidly repair with fix of critical issues, of course. I mean, it might have less of an effort there, but certainly again, if you can catch an enemy tank there in something and basically, you know, leave it in a bad spot, that's good for you. And the only alters one thing you should aim for, I mean, again, if possible, leave it, you know, disabled, not moving about fast, and then flank it if possible. I'll actually you know, try to flank it at the very least. That should generally all sort of be the hierarchy of possible. Try to damage mobility, flank it. And again, if some of those things fail, you know, engage it head on, but if you must, depending on what it is, use numbers. And that's overall sort of the rule for the Alice, of course. I mean, again, it works with Germans, again, rarely will they, well, not so rarely face something heavier than them again. I mean, if they got the Panther, they'll generally sort of have the advantage here, but again, the Panther will usually be much more solitary, and of course, we'll have some challenges there. So that is vital to keep in mind as well. And again, sorry if this is a lot of longer discussion but it is a longer topic and overall I'm sort of you know perhaps expanding a bit too much but overall I'm sort of trying to cover sort of, sort of the vital essences of different things and again it's the basics of tanks and how to get the most out of it but overall again you know damage mobility flank get behind it light tanks good for sort of open areas flanking if you must use them in sort of elsewhere when they're not using well use them to support infantry or something else Medium tanks sort of perform overall well, but again, not so well in sort of rural areas. Again, try to use the mobility as the most. Medium tanks, not very mobile, rely on their strength of armor, health, and gun. Machine guns are good. Watch out for infantry can damage your engine. 
watch out for mines. Of course, use mines and everything to damage anything as well. Always try to do that. Always try to flank. So, you know, try to keep those things in mind. And try, of course, not to attack an enemy anti-tank position head-on. And if you absolutely must, pop down smoke. So, overall, I think that rather covers it. Again, my pardons if this ballooned out a bit too much, but... There it goes. Hopefully people have a bit of a clear idea of things here. I might have to sort of make more specific videos and light, medium and heavy, but overall sort of want to sort of get in there initially and sort of cover the topic a bit broadly, but maybe a bit too broadly. So there you go. Hopefully this will leave you a bit clearer on tanks and what they do, how to get the most out of them and how not to leave them blazing in the field. So there you go. Thank you all for watching and see you another time. Bye.